Uh, I opened my first shop in 1982 uh, after working a, f uh, a few years in the health food business, which is my actually my main goal in life was uh, was uh, health food and natural medicines and and all that. I wanted to to study that, but there wasn't any way uh, any education for that in Denmark at the time. So in the meantime, I thought I could make some clothes because I liked that too and I got some nice uh, fabrics from uh, from Japan from over the world I opened a small shop uh, just around the corner in Studiestrade and uh, and worked there for a few years worked very hard actually and then had an accident and broke my back in a car accident uh, after that accident uh, when I was going to start to try and work again I was with a uh, with a body uh, therapeut um, who wanted to, to, to help me on a deeper level, so to speak. So she, she said to me, why do you always have to work so heavily and do things that are hard and a bit tough? Why don't you try something that's more nice, more soft, like work with silk, for instance? And I thought, well, silk, that's a good idea. But I didn't really know how to get on with it. First, actually, I went to uh, India to look for silk, and it was impossible. And then I thought, I have to go to China. Uh, I didn't have the money first, but uh, I sold whatever I had and went to China, uh, where I had one acquaintance. No friends yet, but what somebody who, was, uh, who had written that he would help me find some uh, tailors or factories. Uh, so I went there with my suitcase full of patterns and samples that we had made here and landed in Beijing in March, no, end of February uh, uh, 1986. And it was very cold and there was no one there and my suitcase was lost. So, I, so for a few hours I was sitting in the airport in Beijing uh, not knowing what to do and why I was there even because he was not there to pick me up and the suitcase was gone. It was cold and it was getting darker and in those days it was a very small airport and the toilet was a hole in the ground. It's, it was that small. Um, so I was hoping and, and praying but eventually my friends turned up and picked me up and we found a place I could stay in Beijing uh, not, not too far from the university where my friend was studying. And after three or four days, we even managed to get the suitcase. The tickets in those days were so expensive, so in order to get a cheap one that was, it was even 7,000 kroner or something, I think, which was a lot of money for me, I had to land twice in Yugoslavia, once in Dubai and once in, in uh, Mumbai, I think, before landing in Beijing. And that's how you lose a suitcase because all that, uh, yeah. So it took days, and I think I was very lucky to get it back. So anyway, then uh, we could start working. We found some small tailors in the hutongs in uh, in Beijing, and uh, and we uh, even took another um, flight to Dalian, which is a bit more north. So we went this way and that way, and I managed to. I think I was there for five weeks or something, and I managed to fill up my suitcase with a lot of things we made, some boxer shorts and shirts that I could sell to Miss Nurko, and uh, all kinds of small dresses and, and things that I could sell in my own shop, and some, and some prototypes for, for styles I wanted to produce more. And that was in, uh, in the Beijing, um, China National Silk in Beijing. So that was the first trip. Next time I went, the year after, I, I found out more that Beijing is not the place to produce. You have to go either to the west uh, or to the south in, in, in uh, Suzhong or even uh, Shanghai. But, but I kept going to China once a year and meeting new people and new uh, producers and also just buying silks, going to the market and buying silks. I, uh, I I studied Chinese first in um, 
in evening school just to be able, like a language school, just to be able to communicate with people at all. Because in those days, nobody spoke English. You couldn't buy a ticket or, uh, or get a meal if you didn't know at least some words of Chinese. Uh, and later on, I also uh, uh, studied Chinese at Copenhagen University, but only for two semesters because it's too much work. Just know some of the culture, some of the language and all that, and it has helped me very much in my communication with, uh, with the Chinese producers because it, it's like an, there's an openness uh, with us. And, and I think in 92 or something, I met a producer that, I, that I'm still with today and is probably almost my only producer and, and is in, in, in the area of, uh, of uh, Sh Shanghai, not so far from Shanghai. It's, it's much more modern now. I mean, we communicate by email. I don't go to China. All the time we communicate by email, we can just send pictures to each other. Everything is so much easier these days. Uh, but of course, at the same time, the market is much tougher. So I'm not, um, I never managed to get rich by making this, but I have stayed in the business and stayed alive for all those years. And, and I think the reason I still love it is, um, is uh, first of all, because of the fabric, it is wonderful, and because I still have this, uh, this uh, continuing flow of uh, new ideas. That, so I always have the next collection and the next collection sort of waiting in my head. So it's not I sit down and say, now I have to make a collection. They're all, they're all waiting because I cannot make huge collections. I have to make relatively small ones. So there are always something I said, ah, I can't make it this season, so maybe I can use it next season. And that's, and, and that's the, um, the, 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 the way I, I, I see it continuing because I don't have plans for the next five years. I only have plans for one collection at a time because I might as well grow tired of it and say, now this business is too tough. I don't like the fashion industry. There are many things I don't like about it, but I like my beautiful shop. I like the Chinese people I work with. And most of all, of course, I like my customers because they are like, they're not the normal fashion customer. They're the sweetest, loveliest women in, in, in Denmark and all of Scandinavia. So this is, this is why I do it because Actually, before before I finish uh, my working life, I would like to go back to uh, the 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 healing, the the natural doctor process. Okay, everything about a collection is something that we do in house, which means all the all the colors. Uh, I make color samples uh, myself and my, we have a small workshop that I uh, dye. But, and the prints, are, um, many of them are made by my brother from, from, from the ground I mean, because he's an artist, he can draw and paint. And, and the ones that he hasn't made from, from, uh, from, from ground, uh, he still makes in the sense that we find prints uh, in, in different media, like uh, on a wallpaper or in a book of fairy tales or, in, or, or just in a book of flowers or whatever. We, we look everywhere and we find uh, things that we think, think are beautiful and he can turn them into a print that can be repeated, I can say. Not by computer, by hand, because he's a... He's a Old, even older than me. And the, the, the shape of a dress, the shape of a, of a woman's body to me, because I'm in my shop so much, uh, I hear all the time and see all the time what, what works on a woman, what makes her feel com comfortable and, and, and beautiful. And that <coughs> is, is what I work from, because I'm not, I don't have a design education and I don't have a special story I want to tell or anything like that. It's just, the, the fabric, the colors, and what a woman would enjoy to wear. That's the whole story in every collection. Uh, the most important thing is to really care, to care about what you do, of course. You have to care about your product so you make it as, as good as possible. Uh, but you also really have to care about the customer. 
you really have. Uh, and uh, that is um, why my where my background was. Uh, I really wanted to to be able to heal, and that's a that's a much higher am ambition actually. If you really want to help people on a deep, deep level, uh, that's a very high ambition and very difficult to to obtain. But um, but 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 the want the urge to do that is good when you run a shop because that is actually where you come from every time you see a customer. How can I help you? And you really mean that. Then you find the things that are the right f items for that person. Because it's not just, I have too much of this, I want to sell it. That will never work in a shop like this because this, this is not how we live. Uh, it's, 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 it's a little bit uh, a cliche to say, do it with love, but it is very important. And if more people would do that in the world with everything, because it's how we can make it doesn't matter if you teach children or you heal patients or you cook food. If you let it come from your heart, you will have a better result. And if the result is not good on the money side, at least you are more happy every day.